Right. How many of you love that menthol, you know, just kind of <sighs> wasabi, right? Um, actually, uh, we were at camp this last week, which was awesome. Um, both kids camp and, and youth camp, and uh, I think that's maybe why my voice is a little bit hoarse. Um, <clears throat> but uh, anyway, one of the, during one of the uh, events, there, we went to the show called Esther, um, it, it, just one of our fun times, and uh, with 800 other kids, and uh, in, in the intermission, I was like super sleepy, and uh, one of these kids came out from camp, he's like, I got something for you, and I was like, all right, you know, and I didn't know who he was, and he, so, <clears throat> but he was a kid, and I was like, all right, I was like, hook me up, bro, and, and uh, so, anyway, and, and he pulls out this little canister, and I'm like, oh, snap, what's that, you know? <clears throat> and he's like, it's the good stuff. And I said, okay. Um, and, and anyways, it was smelling salts. And how many of you are? So smelling salts, like when you're knocked out? Yeah, it's like, he said, get you a hit of that. So <clears throat> he said, I've been having to use this during service, you know? <clears throat> And I thought it was pretty funny. He said, we want to make sure we're getting everything. I said, hey, that's one way to do it. <clears throat> so I took a few hits of that. And let me tell you, that was, <sighs> So it's kind of like menthol and water sometimes, you know. <sighs> all right. Hey, um, all right. We're going to get into the word this morning. I'm Pastor Nate. So glad to be with you this morning. Um, we're going to continue in part two of Letters from the Heart. Um, something that uh, the Lord just, uh, while I was gone on vacation at the end of June, the very first part of July, um, just talking to the Lord, you know, uh, making a petition from my heart and maybe um, just wanting to bring that back and, and uh, maybe address and help us see God's plan for our lives come about. A lot of times, God's plan for our life is hindered simply because of what our heart holds. Yeah. Our heart grows things. Um, and it can, it can often grow not what God designed it to. Um, and, and, and the enemy knows that. Uh, in Mark chapter 4, it tells us that if you don't understand this parable, you won't understand anything. And it talks about how the sower sows the word, and the word is sown in the heart. Well, the third piece, it talks about how, uh, and I believe a lot of the church is in this place where uh, it's not that the word fell on the wayside. It's not that there was no death. It's that it was sown, but other things were sown with it. And, and so um, if, anytime there's, there's competing things in a garden uh, or, or in a heart, um, they're not as fruitful. And, and, and sometimes not even fruitful at all, right? And so uh, letters of the heart, we're really t- ultimately talking about Maybe, in a sense, cultivating our heart or attending our heart and maybe pulling some of those things out. And so, <clears throat> I don't know if you know this, but um, sometimes uh, in, this, in this, this, this last little bit, I felt like one of the things when I was gone was the Lord just kind of rearranging how I approach Sunday morning to some degree, at least for right now. And that it's not just about a message, it's about more like interacting and um, and just maybe kind of showing what's actually what act like kind of like the behind the scenes, you know. Have you ever watched how it's made, like on on the History Channel, like and you'll see like how a guitar is made, or how many of you ever remember uh, Mr. Rogers, right? And he'd take you to the place where they make a cello. How many of you ever saw that one? And the cello is made. Okay, all right. Anyway, where the, all these cool things are made, and so you get to see the behind the scenes, what it really goes into. Um, and so, so I, I just felt like that, that some of those things are important. So, um, you know, sometimes we pray, uh, like, let's say whoever's the speaker, oh, Father, we're going to come to you and we're going to pray before we see, receive the word. Okay, why? Why are we going to pray before we receive the word? Is it just to be traditional, to, to somebody on the stage to look spiritual? Or is there actually something that's to be happening in all of our hearts? And even before I get, if I, if, if I wait to pray before I get to the stage, well, then I'm behind, you know, um, even as we come, we come, come before 
uh, you know, before a service or before, like as you come into a weekend, it, it, you, it could just become just the, just as what you do. You just come with no expectation, with no, um, in a sense, looking for God to move in, in my heart or for, to equip me for what I'm uh, going, in, in, you know, what I'm going through in this world, the, the battles that I'm facing, that, or to be, in a sense, be the, a cheese and bread carrier like David to, to his brothers at the battle. Sometimes, how many of you know you just need to carry some cheese? And that's as much as imp- uh, important as it is the one sling in the stone. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so before before we come here, um, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna and I, I shared some things last week just about like a, a prayer from my heart, right? And it's just I read from my little notebook about here's some prayers from my heart. And so I thought um, <clears throat> I would just take just about one minute to let you hear my prayers for this service this morning. Um, because a lot of times nobody knows that these things go in, but these things could be going in for you. These things are for you, but also um, when you understand that uh, God wants to work with you, not just for the service, but work with you for your children, work with you for so many things. And so um, this was this morning's uh, <clears throat> this was this morning's prayer. I'm just going to try to regurgitate, uh, articulate my heart. Uh, as I laid it before the Lord this morning. Father, I thank you this morning that as we come together and as we gather under your authority, that you would be seen, that you would be heard. I thank you for the unclamping, and this is, what, so this is one of the things that seemed to be so clear this morning, the unclamping of the things that have been held and ha- have been holding on to our hearts. I thank you for the de-rooting, the, the untethering, the unclamping, as it were, the, the, the hand, uh, uh, even it would be as of talons, uh, would be taken out and released off of the hearts today, that our hearts would only hold, that the hearts of this house and these people, the fathers, the mothers, the sons, and the daughters would only hold your words and would only hold what you say about them, would only hold what you say about their children, would only hold what you say about their bodies, would only hold what you say about others. Father, thank you this morning for unclamping the unclamping of our hearts and that there would be the words that that are not your words uprooted and that that what would be tended in our hearts would only be your words and that your words would produce fruit in our hearts and that there, there would be a fruitfulness and there would be a joy and joy would not only abound to you but to us because of fruit in our lives. Father, thank you that as we hear your word, it is a seed that is what we need for today. We thank you. I thank you. And I thank you that what comes forth today wouldn't just be my words, but it would be what you want to say. Father, I yield to you. I thank you for the anointing that what we're coming here to do is just not out of a religious ritual, but because we desire to meet with you. And so I thank you, Father, that we wait on you this morning and we know you as God, one that is powerful, one that causes the wars to cease. And we just trust you this morning. I trust you this morning as we come together in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. And what is that? I'm praying in the Spirit. And then what would come out, what came out was actually I began to interpret what I was praying. You know, the Bible tells us that when you pray in an unknown tongue, that's one thing, that's good, but he also tells us to pray that we would interpret. And, and like the interpretation would come forth. And as you do, and as you do this, and as you, and I was just declaring the word of God this morning. Thank you, Lord. No. That, 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 this is something that <clears throat> I'm, I'm inviting you into writing from your heart. There's a lot of things that God uh, is limited by because simply we don't give him that time. And so last week we talked a lot about this. We talked about how so many times things get into our hearts and, <clears throat> and it's not bad things, right? It, it, it just, it's just busy things. It's not bad things. It may be just words that are just idle words, right? And we looked at the scripture. We're going to look at this again before we build into this week. But what's the significance of these words? The Bible tells us that these words, when they get in, into our hearts, words that uh, don't really mean a whole lot, they're pointless, they're meaningless, they cause you and I to turn aside. 
and, and, <clears throat> and to turn aside or to be pulled from, that's that which we should be um, uh, focused on or that which should have our attention. And so God is oftentimes limited uh, and one of the one of the ways that um, I, I've said it many actually I've said it many times the will of God is limited in this world by how much of our will we will let Him have, and our will is released by the words of our mouth. And so again, <clears throat> the whole purpose of these two these two weeks is to to help you and me to in a sense write the letter of our heart. And last week we kind of, um, you know, what's, what's, what's so cool, I was reminded, and I don't have the scripture and verse for this, but I was reminded of <clears throat> in the Gospels when, when Jesus tells this parable about somebody going and knocking on the door of somebody's house in, in the middle of the night, and they don't want to get up because they're, you know, in their nightgown and all that kind of stuff, but because they came at that time, and because they won't stop knocking, it says the person of the house will get up and they'll tend to them and give them the cup or whatever, you know, just so that they will go away. You understand what I'm saying? And then, and, and he says, well, how about if you would ask the Lord again and again and again, it would be done for you. Sometimes we have certain things that we want or we desire, but we don't desire them that much that we, we, because there's other things in our, in our heart. And so we don't contend for we don't fight for, fight the fight of faith, or stand in there having done all to stand. Stand, right? We, we just move on, and we find something else that would pet us or um, distract us uh, into another day, into another day, into another day. And all the while, the very thing that your heart really desires, God's wanting to bring it about, but, but the way that God brings anything about is through his word and through your and my words. We we are to rule and reign with Christ, uh, seed and authority with Adam. It was given to him in the garden. It's, it's take, when, when he gave his authority to Satan, say, Jesus came and took it back, and, and authority has been back given to you. But authority is exercised with the words of our mouth. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and turn this morning, um, <clears throat> and, I, I, and hang with me this morning because... Um, <clears throat> You know, like, I think it's important. We're not just here to just get a quickie, a quickie message, like a, just like, oh, yeah, hey, yeah, that was great. Uh, on to the next thing. But we're to be equipped and to be trained because the, what you're dealing with is a matter of life and death. Like there are kids, uh, there, there are your children whose destiny right now, let me, let me, uh, let me just say this. If, if, if what we're going to talk about this morning could, could preserve your children or cause your children, your grandchildren, or your loved ones uh, to, to have God's way in their life, would you want it? Could I listen in on, uh, just, could I give it this much time so that I'm not having to spend all this time and all this heartache and all this, and, and, and yet, and, yet it, um, and not be able to accomplish what I so want to? You know, one moment with God, can, he, can, he can do more in one moment when I'm in, when I'm, in agreement with God, and when God's having his way, then I can, in all of my toil, in all of my determination, and all of my, God can just snap it, and, and just boom. Uh, we're going to look at this here a little bit, but Paul, you remember Paul, on the way, he, he was like the greatest persecutor of the church. I mean, he was a murderer. He stood there and, 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 and enjoyed the killing of Stephen. Think about this. Uh, you know, he, and yet in a moment on the way to Damascus, in a moment's time, he turned from the greatest enemy of Christ to the greatest. It's like just a switch. Like you couldn't do it, but God showed up and God showed up with his love and God showed up in, in a mighty way. When God shows up, what I found that when he shows up to you and me, he shows up In love. Wow. Love is not weak. Love's not weak at all. Um, matter of fact, <clears throat> I'll, I'll show you, I'll, just, to, just to reiterate how strong love is. Um, it, it, and how, if, if love's weak, how come, I, how come you and I so often struggle to stay in that place, keep the bar up of love? It's, it's a powerful thing. It's a strong thing. It's, um, it's a heavy thing. It, 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 it can arrest us. Like when nothing else can hold you down, like when you just 
you're not going to get me. I'm doing whatever I want. You know, have you ever just, you're not going to control. I'm doing whatever I want. The love of God. <laughs> so well, this, is, this is how you and I came to know Christ. It's how we turn towards him. The love of God is what led us. It was his goodness. It was his kindness. All right. So here we go. Let's turn here real quick. <clears throat> and we're going to re-look re, re at a couple scriptures. And we're going to uh, get to this week's message again. Letters from the Heart, Part 2. Um, 1 Timothy 1, 3-7. I urge you, uh, as I urge you on my departure to Macedonia, you should stay on in Ephesus to instruct certain men to, teach, uh, to not to teach false doctrine. So Paul is telling Timothy, having left him in Ephesus now, uh, to, to be an overseer, a pastor of this church, he says, instruct these certain men to not teach false doctrines and to not devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. Uh, and we talked about this. If you're, gonna, if you're a young man, Timothy, and, 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 and you're supposed to instruct other teachers not to teach certain things, there's going to be some, right? <clears throat> but it's important enough. It's important enough to not uh, to some to some of the things that we're being taught and endless th- and, and things that we're just getting the church off and causing a a pause in the purpose of the church, yeah. causing a deadening for which it was created, literally bringing to a halt. See, turning aside, the enemy wants to stop your purpose. Yeah. The enemy wants to stop your children's purpose. <clears throat> Did you know? Those phones have a have a big uh, have a big part to play in causing a pause in our purpose. Uh, and I know it sounds like uh, this is not a soapbox. This is a reality. This is not a soapbox. That, that look at the hours of my of your day of my day that that are on that phone. And you might say, "Oh, well, it's only two hours. It's only this. It's only that." And that's what we, 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 we can say things to justify uh, our time. But the reality is, am I stewarding it well? Because the enemy wants to pull me aside from things. I'm not saying we can't have phones. We're going to need to live in. Absolutely. I'm just asking the question. It, and, you know, when, if you have kids sometimes saying these things, you know that um, you're going to have all hell break loose. Hey, can we get off social media? But it might be important enough for Paul to tell Timothy that even though there might be some adversity to set some of these things in order, there might be some adversity, but it'll, but it'll be worth it because their purpose will be preserved. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let's keep going here. Now, how we do it and how these kind of things, these things are important, all right? Um, we know that grace is only administered when you speak the truth. Okay, all right. So that's, that's scripture, all right? And so we need grace to be administered, not just willpower. We need God power, okay? Because how many of you have also, anybody here, have found that you don't want to do the things that sometimes you end up doing? Paul, Paul did that. I, I, I do that. You, you do that. We're not, we're not uh, indifferent in that re- regard. He says, um, verse 4, Or devote themselves to myths, myths and endless genealogies which promote speculation rather than stewardship of God's work, which is by faith. Somebody say stewardship, stewardship. of God's work. Of God's work. So, so you and I are called to steward God's work. <clears throat> but the ultimate goal of God's work and the ultimate goal of the message you're going to find right here in verse 5, the goal of our instruction is, is the love that comes from a pure heart. The goal of all the instruction of the gospel is that love would find somebody and that love through them would find another. This is how God works. It's like he let, Jesus went away and uh, when he went away, he gave unto the people, the comforter, the helper, the Holy Spirit, the, sp- the Spirit of God, uh, to, 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 and to bring about the fruits of the Spirit in, in us so that now no longer is there just one Christ. Now there's 120 in, on the upper room. And from there, it would be expanded and expanded and expanded. And that in this place, right here, there's all these little Christs. There's all these people, the love of God, or who are filled with the love of God. If you've been born again, 
The love of God has came and dwelled in you. And even Christ's prayer, his prayer was that you would know the love of God, that that would be manifest in you. And so, for, so love finds us, but then love finds us, and love, the love of God in us wants to find another. It wants to be displayed through your and my life. This is why the greatest fulfillment for, in our lives comes when just love is manifest. When, whether it's in giving or when you, uh, we're in kind, like you, you love love. You desire love. All right. The goal of our instruction is love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and sincere faith. Verse six. Some have strayed from these ways. What ways? Love. Strayed from the ways of love and strayed from the, way, the ways of stewardship of the, of the mystery. We're turned aside because we're talking about this and this and this. And we're, for, we're not tending to the, the gospel and caring about our Father's plan. We're more concerned about our, what we love, our, our fulfillment, instead of understanding that our design, uh, our destiny is to fulfill God's purpose. It's his call. It's his purpose. It's his power. It's his inheritance. I'm his son, and yet he's given it to me. Okay, let's keep going here. But he said, <clears throat> we, so we can, we can be pulled aside and, 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 and not steward that, but we can also um, be turned, turned aside um, from w- with our hearts filled with empty talk. Let me go back to verse 5 again. The goal of the instruction is love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and sincere your faith. Some have strayed from these ways, these ways being stewardship of the gospel and love. And love. So stewardship of the gospel, we kind of talked about this last week, and we could have spent I, lots more time there. But stewardship of the gospel and these ways being love and turned aside to empty talk. How Can your mouth pause you or cause you to stop walking in love? Turn aside. So I was walking, and then empty talk, idle words, vain words, depending on your translation, pointless, that it doesn't go anywhere, but what it does is it pauses you from, from ultimately walking in love. Let me give you an example. Can you believe blah, 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 blah? So no, I mean, this is going to pause your love walk. When, when I, when, if, I wanna, if I poison somebody's water, it'll not all, you know, understand what I'm saying. If I talk bad about somebody else to somebody else, it's going to pause not only my love walk, but their love walk because I'm depositing words into their heart. Let's not, let's, not, let's not talk about just strive, okay? Let's not talk about like, oh, well, someone's talking bad about somebody. Let's talk about you talking about your kids. Let's talk about you talking about your marriage. Let's talk about you talking about your finances. Let's talk about you talking about whatever you want to talk about, vain, empty talk that's not what God says, and now it causes us to turn aside, and there's a lot of our turning aside and us tending, and you know what's crazy? When we turn aside from the walking in love and, and the path that God has for us, now I'm having to create, develop, and and manipulate and, and do whatever I can do to get the desired results I want because I've gotten off of where God is. <clears throat> so with your children, when you're trying to uh, bring about God's ways, in your because your heart wants so bad for your kids to be right or to follow the Lord or whatever it might be, you and I can move from, <clears throat> because we're now addressing the issues, but not addressing the issues uh, from what God says. We're addressing it from all of this, and, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. And we're working on something, but we're, God's not in that. Yeah. Let's get God back in it, yeah. okay? We're, and let's get, let's get, without our vain talk, let's pull some of that stuff up. Because sometimes we're, we're we, our kids have, and I'm just talking for myself here. Okay? Sometimes I, my words create an identity in my children that I don't want. Could I create an identity in somebody that I don't want them to have simply because of my vain talking? Because of me talking about what, what, has, what I see? Instead of the Lord talk, telling us that the way that God works, he calls those things that are not as though they are. Okay, Let's keep going here. <clears throat> Some have strayed from these ways and turned aside to empty talk. And they want to, uh, to be teachers of the law, but they don't, even, they don't understand what they're saying or, or that which is so, um, or they so confidently assert. 
It, it, could it be that sometimes we're saying things like as a matter of fact about, and, and, and we have no idea. Absolutely no idea. All right. Um, again, I want to I want to just talk again about the the stewardship um, of the call of God, Ephesians three eight through ten. Though I'm less than the least of these, all these saints, Paul talking to the church at Ephesus, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to illuminate to everyone the stewardship. Some says manifold. The, in other words, the, the God design, the, him thinking about every part and putting it together, how God stewarded the, a mystery for, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. And his purpose was that now through the church, the many-sided wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly realms. So that even angels are, are being schooled by, and seeing the love of God where, where what people are judged by is not their works, but God's. This is supposed to be happening. This is crazy. This is crazy that you and I would, would let the love of God cause me to move instead of what I see. This is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy that that the, the, the angels in the in in the, those in, in heavenly realms are going. Okay, wait a minute. You, you're saying that you're not getting what you deserve because of what Christ did. Yet we did. You know, Johnny Johnny Demon Angel did that, and he got this, but yet God's dealing with man this way? Okay, explain to me. This is crazy. Think about this. That not, that the, lo- the love of God and the church, through the church, there would be a demonstration a revealing that even angels would go, wow, this love is powerful. Wow, this is amazing. That God, This is how God, how God works and how he, how he desires for, how he desires to work. From through you and me, and the, through the through the church, that he, he through the church he, in this world, people will come to know him and his love. That's, it's amazing. Paul saying this. All right, First Timothy chapter one verse five. The purpose of instruction. I'm going to read this out of the New Living. Okay, and, and then we'll get we're going to get to today. All right. So the first uh, first Timothy one five, and I'm laying this foundation because I don't know about you, but like I can know something. But sometimes I just got to get back in the in the the, yeah. the groove just to get back where I was at was at. <clears throat> but First Timothy uh, one five New Living. The purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. Paul understands the significance of you and I having love in our heart. This is what this is the purpose of all of his instruction. The purpose of all of this is not so you would be right. Like, mm, right, like, uh, well, yeah, obviously righteous. In other words, in agreement with God's way. But that you wouldn't just be like, I got my life together. Or that, that even the purpose of all this so that you would show you how wrong you are and how, and all, and how much work you need and how much you need to do. This is, that's not the purpose of this. It's that the purpose of this is that we would see the love of God and his love for us and that the love of God that found us would, would dwell in us so that we could walk in and walk partnered with God to bring his love to the world. Okay? But how many of you know if I'm tending all these things over here and all these flash fires and all these flash fires and all these flash fires, which oftentimes are brought about by my vain talk, how many of you know it's going to hinder the love of God from going to the world? And in the vain talk will also hinder the love of God to going to my children or to my coworkers or to my friend that well, isn't not my friend anymore because of blah, 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 blah. Okay? Now, <clears throat> so I don't talk. It's the war against the affections of your heart. We looked at that last week. And we understand that in this world there's many voices. All of them have a... a are significant, have a purpose in mind. So let's go on to this. 1 Timothy 1, 18 through 19. These are <clears throat> letters to the church. Timothy, my son, my child, I entrust you with this command in keeping with previously prophecies about you. In other words, keep him with what God, keep what God says before you. Keep Because there's a lot of other words. I'm going to say that again. Keep what God says before you because there's a lot of other words. 
So let me just talk, just pause for a moment and talk about for me and, and the church, okay? Um, there's words and prophecies that were given to, to encourage this house, but also to encourage me as, as an under shepherd or leader of this house. And if, if a different word rises other than God, what God is going to start, he's going to finish. If, if, if a different word other than what, what just, uh, just talking about bringing God, bringing in him building the church, but one where, uh, how are you going to do it? And what about this? And what about this? How many of you know that's a heavy place? And, 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 and it now comes onto me. But if I could stick with what God says, I won't stop short. This is what he's saying. Hey, I want you to remind you, stick with what God says. Put that back before you. Put that back before you um, <clears throat> so that by them you might fight the good fight. Hold on to and possess faith. How does faith come? Hearing God's word and hearing and hearing God's word. So you and I, if we're going to partner with God, if we're going to make it to where he does, wants you and I to make, make it to, if he wants our children to make it to where God wa- he wants it, then you and I are going to need to hold on to what God's word says over what we see. My God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. I need to hold on to, uh, talking to, uh, the, as a giver, hey, thank you for, well, then, then I'm going to have to hold on to that word over uh, a bank account. I'm going to have to hold on to a word over my fa- family, o- over my children, more than what I see in the moment. Because I want to partner with God. I want to stay in the place where God can move and stay in that place where I'm partnering with him here on this earth, holding on to possessing faith and good conscience, which some have rejected and thereby shipwrecked their faith, fallen short. When you and I let go of these things, shipwreck. Sometimes it's a big mess. Sometimes it's just kablooey. Other times it runs aground short of where it's supposed to go. All right. So let's keep going. Many things can keep us from the main thing. How many of you know that? And so we talked about how does, what does it look like to guard your heart? And we went here, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, and this is where we're picking up this morning. Be anxious for nothing but in everything, by prayer and petition, specific felt need, petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, the quietness, the, the wholeness, the join together with God. This is what this word peace, Irene. It's the join together with God which surpasses understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. How, what's the key to guarding your heart? We know in Proverbs chapter 4, it tells us to guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the pathways, the, the issues, the, the rivers of your life. What's the key to guarding your heart? Prayer. The key to guarding your my heart is prayer and petition. Well, these are, they're one and the same, but they're not. Because it's the, the release of my heart. Sometimes we just pray whatever comes. But there are some definite requests that, you, that keep coming to you. You know, you're dealing with this concerning your finances. You're dealing with this concerning your children. You're dealing with this concerning your health. You're dealing with this concerning whatever it might be. A definite request. And so we talked about writing your own letter. Writing your own letter and keeping it before you. Keeping it before you so it can be in his hands instead of, instead of consuming my life. Amen. Petitions are important. Let me I'll give you, give you uh, um, last year we, we took uh, quite a bit of time talking about having vision boards. Okay? <clears throat> and in our, in our prayer room, uh, our room that we built on the house is a sunroom, but we, it's a place where, we, where, I, where I study. It just has biggest glass windows. I love looking outside. Um, against the window, we had our, our pegboard, or, or not pegboard, corkboard with all of our vision stuff. We're a strong family without walls, overflowing with love, desiring to please the Lord. We're a, this is a declaration. We are finishers. You know, there's some things uh, that we had put up on there for even people that say, hey, I want to put that. Like, to know him and make, make him known. We, we carry the message of Jesus beyond these four walls. Okay? So there's different things. And then there's declarations about each one of my children. Okay? And you know what? When I would get up in the morning, and because that was there, I, could, I can tell you all these things because they were there. But about... <clears throat> About three months ago, three and a half months ago now, um, we put our house up on the market. 
for sale. Okay, and within a few days it sold, and then we've been in a thing, and then like now we got to go back, and all this kind of chaos. Um, but while getting it ready to show, how many of you know you kind of order some things, you make that lamp look nice, you 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 know, and so guess what we did with it? Put it away. Hmm, interesting. What do you think happened by not keeping it before us? Maybe, maybe, maybe didn't, didn't, wasn't reminded of it so much. Maybe, um, maybe when, maybe it wasn't praying it so much. Maybe um, saw some other things and those seemed to trump what, what. And so <clears throat> it's amazing how now decisions are being made more based on, based on something I see than, uh, Father, thank you so much for this. I thank you that, that uh, the gift with a gift. He, uh, he, uh, the, I'm just talking to uh, one of our ch- children. A gift with a gift. Uh, this is, uh, I'm, it's okay if I talk. Just, this is real. A gift with a gift. This is Matthew. Matthew. Matthew John. Every one of my son's names is John. It means gift. A gift from God. My middle name is also John. All right? So, and also a voice. Okay? I, I believe all of them have a voice. Okay? That's what I, I believe. They're all leaders. Okay? So, I, 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 to me, that's special. So, John, a gift. But his name is Matthew, which means a gift. So he's a gift with a gift. And so to me, to us, when, before we named our kids, it felt like the Lord was very, very intentional to us to say, I want you to name them what I want you to name them. Like, we couldn't just pick Lincoln, because I like the word Lincoln. But none of them got the name Lincoln, which means pools of water, anyway. Um, <clears throat> I couldn't just name them what I wanted because I felt like the Lord said, we, we sought the Lord what to name them. A gift with a gift. And so wisdom. And so this has been a prayer for my son, my oldest son, that, that he carries the gift of wisdom. He knows what to do, not based upon what he sees, but based upon here. There's a wisdom that's from above, but he operates by the wisdom that's not, or there's an earthly wisdom and there's a wisdom from above. He doesn't operate on this level. He operates on this level. So he stands above and he carries the gift of wisdom wherever he goes. He's a gift with a gift. This is, I have another one who's my middle one. His name's Samuel. We didn't know his name for a long time. We actually got his name at Champions for Christ. Years ago, Brother Keith Moore was there teaching all these young people, which is so cool, Champions for Christ. We have Brother Keith, Brother Kenneth Copeland, Jesse DePlanet, Pastor Mark, Billy, like the, 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 just older generation speaking to this younger generation. So cool. And, and he talked about how Samuel was one that, here I am, your servant is listening. Samuel is the one who hears. And P- pa- Pastor Evan and I leaned over and said, that's it. Just a witness. And so this has been a declaration. Understand that my words and my names, just like Abraham, have not just been about um, uh, having a name, but I've been declaring that over my children every day. Every time I say Samuel, I, I declare to him, he's one that hears the Lord. And so we talk about this. He's one that hears the Lord, but not the only one who hears, but knows how to respond and say, here I am, Lord, your servant is listening. So that's a declaration. We put that, and then Caleb. We, we Caleb. We, 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 when he was born, before he was born, we knew he was going to be a different one. <laughs> In my Lord, a different spirit, one of a different spirit, <clears throat> and. And so we, we prayed that of, of a different spirit, not like just not just just out of the box. And one and again, Joshua and Caleb, loyal, loyal, loyal to the things of God uh, of a different spirit, because there's a lot of words that the world says, but he's of a different spirit. He's of a world, a word that the with the Lord says. And so he sides just like Joshua and Caleb. He sides with God's word above the world's word. And so he doesn't fear. He's not afraid. And he is of, he's different. And, and he is okay with that. Not only okay with that, but from that place, God's going to use him and he will inherit the promise. And he'll lead people into the promise. So these are just things that, that were, but you know, um, my prayers weren't governed by a lot of that stuff just because they just weren't before me. So how do you and I guard our heart? By our prayers. So when something comes heavy on you, it's important to let that, when you get hit with something, Father, I lift that up to you right now. So you, you, I give this to you. Father, I'm asking you right now to move. And Okay, that's good. But when there's things that, are, that you know that you're to steward, 
But you know that you're constantly, like your children. This is why I say children and finances and health and these kind of things. Because this isn't just like all of a sudden came up. This is something that you always have to do. So if I'm going to steward it well, I'm going to do it with the Lord's help. So this keeps me and my heart clean and, 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 and able to carry what he's wanting to do. In, because I'm partnered with him in all of this. Okay? So prayer and petition. Okay. So. Let's, let's keep going here. 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 through 4. <clears throat> First of all, then, I urge that petitions, prayers, and intercession. It's interesting that it's multiple words. It wasn't just prayer. That there's prayers or petitions, there's prayers, and there's intercession. Isn't that interesting? It's not just, hey, pray. Just pray, just pray. But there's, the, if you were to break that word down, maybe you've read it. First of all, then pray for all men. Maybe your Bible will only put one word there. It's more than one word, okay? It's that you and I would have petitions. That you're, just ask, Father, I thank you right now for our family. This is one of, again, one of the things that we had said. Our family is, we are a strong family, without walls, overflowing with love, desiring to please the Lord. What does that mean? For us, we want to be an open house to, to others, yet we're strong. So our strength doesn't come from barriers that we're going to keep people out. Our strength is that he that's in us. We're a strong family without walls, overflowing with love towards one another. And this is declarations because sometimes being a house full of boys. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody raised with some boys? Okay, boys. Okay, I'm one of five or one of, one of six kids, four boys in the house. Let me tell you, there was some knockdown drag outs. There were some shirts ripped. There was some blood that got hit or, you know, that was spilt from fights. Um, there was some anger and there's some words exchanged and blah, 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 blah. Um, but yet, we're, we're, a, we're a house that overflows with love. And our, our heart's desire is to please not just God, but the Lord. Lordship. So we understand lordship. This is a petition. There's a petition. And then there's prayers. If one of my sons going through something that all of a sudden, let's say there's a girl thing or, you know, or whatever it might be, or, or a sports thing, okay, that, that, that is near and dear to their heart. Father, I thank you for that. And I'm going to lift that up before him because that's seasonal. But even seasonal things, you can write that on your board and then you can say, God, God did that. God did that. God did that. And if God did it for them, he'll do it for you. And why is it important for me to know a God that does answer prayer? Because where I go with the love of God, other people need to experience the love of God. And when I come, I need to be able to pray the prayer of faith with them, knowing that God moved for me. He's going to move for you. He's going to move for you with your children. He's going to move with you for you with your finances. He's going to move with you for you when he a breakthrough, when it didn't look like it was going to work, and God just moved. I need to know my God. So prayer is huge. Inter uh, uh, petition. But then intercession. This is a big one. And um, this is so important. In the prayer interceding. Did you know, anybody ever heard the power of a praying grandma? How about a praying mom? Let me say this. How about a praying father? How about that? How about a power of a praying father that doesn't just have to use his hands and his, you better fear me, son, but his prayers are more powerful than his hands. His prayer and what he can do with the Lord is more powerful than, than some kind of force that he can exert over his children. Interceding. Interceding, standing in the gap. Interce intercessory prayer so that they could choose freely like the enemy you, you the bible talks about how the enemy would love to blind eyes to oppress you know what intercession does the bible says that the prayer of a righteous man it, it makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working it's able to push back and i can stand in the gap in a sense i can be like the red sea splitter in other words, so where they can move through, I can hold it back so you can get through. I can hold it back, not only so you can get through, but so you can see clearly. I can hold it back. This is a big one. And this is one that you and I, we need, this is part of God's plan for you and me here on this earth, to intercede. A go-between. That's what it, to stand, and this is our ministry. 
a ministry of reconciliation, to go between. And sometimes the greatest thing that we can do is not try to is, is to stand in the gap and intercede even for our children, for our friends, for our loved ones, and not get so tired of it. You know, not just once. But how do I intercede? This is the big thing. How do I intercede? And <clears throat> thank you, Lord. He goes on to say, first of all, uh, let me finish reading this. First of all, then I urge you by prayers, petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings and those in authority, so that we may live, lead, or may, may lead tranquil uh, and quiet lives in all godliness and dignity. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. How many of you believe that? God wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. I'm going to back up from, from this passage, and I want to talk about what Paul talked about before he talked about that. Sometimes we've got to understand that these letters were written in letter form. They didn't have chapter and verse. Okay? And so there's thoughts that he was articulating to the hearer. And, and sometimes we, we miss what was right before that helps you and I in our prayer. And one of the things he talks about, because he tells us to now pray, tells us to pray, but what he talks about, he, he talks about the grace of God. And he talks about God finding him. This is, what, this is so important. Your prayer, without understanding God's part, is empty, and you and I won't do it. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Your and my prayer without understanding God's part in the fact that he actually moves and is moving upon our prayer will cause you and I to get weary and to stop doing or to not do it all together. Okay, let me, let me ask you this. How many of you, okay, this is, this is, this is a good, good thing to ask, but I don't know how honest people would be in here. How many of you could honestly say you pray for other people? Every day. A few. A few. And that's a fact. The same thing would be true if I was to ask you, how many of you read this every day because you got to have it? You know what it would be? A few. Because you know what? You don't have to have it. Or so you've been told. I don't need prayer because why does prayer doesn't even really work? I mean, I got to do this and this, and I don't see God helping all along the way. I don't see His part. I don't under, I, I don't really don't see it. So I just like uh, prayer is my last resort instead of my first step. And, and we wonder why we're going alone. The pray, uh, a prayerless life is truly a pride filled. Life, I'm opposed to the grace of God instead of partner with the grace of God. I want to partner with the grace of God for my children. I want to partner with the grace of God in my finances. I want to partner. I want a church. I want this church. I want the people to be a church that's partnered with the grace of God, the kindness and the mercy of God in our daily lives, that we're not limited and where we can where we go, we go with the power and the love of God and the grace of God with us. I want, to, I want to pick up right here. Um, thank you, Lord. I was going to say that was, that's not First Timothy. <laughs> there it is. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to start in verse 12. I, I know I didn't give you guys this. It says, I thank Jesus Christ, the Lord, who has strengthened me. This is Paul again, God's grace to Paul. So he's testifying. But he's testified right here. Hey, um, guys, don't be so busy. Uh, Timothy, I need you to correct some things. There's a lot of the church over there that's busied by things that don't matter, and the purpose for which I've created them, it's been paused, and I, I, I don't want it to be pulled aside. I want the work that God started, it needs to come to its end, so bring some uh, correction here. Let's get some of those things dealt with, and then let me tell you about the grace of God to me. And from that, I, me telling, the, telling you about the grace of God to me, it's a testimony he's talking about, you're going to see this, that it's how he reached me, he'll reach others. First Timothy 1.12. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me. He has considered me faithful and appointed me to service. I was formerly a blasphemer. I was a persecutor. I was a violent man. So here he's talking about, 
And you can apply this, the grace of God, to places where it doesn't look like. So he was this. So let me ask you this. What do your finances look like? Lack. What do your children look like? Rebellious. What does your body look like? Sick. What is it like? Okay. He said, I was, I was all of these things that didn't look like God would move or that he would choose me. Okay. He says this. I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a violent man. Yet because I had acted ignorant, in ignorance and unbelief, I was shown mercy. And the grace of our Lord Jesus overflowed to me along with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Let me pause. I just heard this real clearly. Um, somebody said, yeah, but that's because he acted unknowingly. Let me ask you this. If you're blindfolded and you walk off this, was that unknowingly? If you're blindfolded, and I, if, I, if, I, if I was blindfolded and I didn't know that this was right here, would that be unknowingly? It would be, wouldn't it? Did you know the enemy is trying to blind the eyes of children, of trying to blind your eyes? And did you know there's a lot of decisions that you and I make because we think we know, but we've been looking by sight and we're making decisions unknowingly? <clears throat> and the grace of the Lord overflowed to me where, where I don't know what to choose. Where, where I walk or when I, when, I, when I make a decision thinking it's the right call because, because it, this is, and it's the wrong call, but I made a choice trying to get it right, God's grace is available. Even if I get it wrong. If I make a choice and I try to get it right, even if I get it wrong, because I was, I was trying to get God's grace is there for me. Now, if I make the decision that, uh, in, very intentionally, and God knows, and I know, and it's very clear to me, then guess what? God's grace is forfeited there. Okay? The Bible teaches that. All right? Uh, he goes on to say, this is a trustworthy saying, full of acceptance. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I'm the worst. So he's given this testimony of God's mercy and God's grace. And, and I was a blasphemer. I was a murderer. I was this. Uh, this is a trustworthy saying, full of, uh, and full of acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I'm the worst. But for this very reason, I was shown mercy. So that in me, the worst of sinners... Christ Jesus might display, what does he want to display? His perfect patience as an example to those who believe in him for eternal life. Now to the king immortal, invisible, to the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. I want to talk this morning about patience. Just This is what I want to kind of close with, is patience. Let, let's, just, let's talk about patience for a second. Let's talk about patience in our prayers. Because is it that we don't believe that prayer doesn't work? Maybe not. It's just, I prayed. I waited. All right. I'll go just to do it myself. I, I, I prayed. I waited. Okay. I had a God talk with you, and we had a heart-to-heart with my, let's just talk child, okay? I had a heart to heart with you, took you out for ice cream. I don't know, maybe you had a, a late night conversation, you know, had a heart to heart and things were good. And then something else happens and you're like, what the? Anybody? Anger? Instead of patience, let's, 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 just, let's talk about the patience of God. Let's talk about what this word here is. And it's the same word that we see in the love chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love is patient. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Um, but I, I want to I go back to 1 Corinthians 12, 31 and go into 1 Corinthians 4. It says that, in 1 Corinthians 12, it's all about the power and the gifts of the Spirit. How many of you think the gifts of the Spirit could reach your kids? You do, because you think powerful gifts, it's going to be what's going to change their life. But it's not. It's not what leads people to Christ. The love of God is what leads people to the Lord. It, all of 1 Corinthians 12 is about the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, power gifts. 
Have anybody, let me ask you this. Anybody know somebody that received a miracle and is not serving the Lord? Or from what you can tell in the fruit? Anybody seen God move in an accident and just like spare their life and blah, blah, blah? But that, and they know it was God, it was God, it was God. But regularly they're kind of like two thumbs up to God, but a different finger. Okay? So God's intervention doesn't always, but the love of God. But the love of God is what leads us. It's the love of God that not only leads us, but also keeps us. Okay, and so 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31, he says, I'm going to show you all these things are great and to be desired so that you could minister and give gifts of our Heavenly Father to people because God wants to be good and give gifts, not because you earned it, because if you earned it, it's not a gift. So he's going to give people gifts, whether they earned it or not. He desires to give gifts. He desires that you are equipped with the power of God to give gifts to people. That's his heart. That's our Father's heart, not because you've been naughty or nice, okay, but because he loves you. That's crazy to think, but not because you've been good or bad, but because he loves you. Like, think about that for your kids. Well, you're going to get ice cream because you were good today, or you're going to get ice cream because I love you. And it's easy for you and I to fall into the, I'm going to reward you based on behavior instead of reward you because of my love. It's easy for us to fall into that. And then you would say, well, you're just going to spoil them. Well, that's human reasoning. Because that's not God, how God treats us. And if I'm to be looking to my father so that I can father well, I'm going to have to let the love of God, the same love that's in him that he shed abroad in my heart, be what leads me instead of the cares and these vain words that, are, that, I, that I've, I've received in my heart. Vain meaning what I've seen, vanity, okay, that lead me in, in my decisions towards what I'm going to. How, am I, how are you going to respond? I'm going to respond. How? With the love of God. This is how you're in my response. This is what, uh, how, how we're to intercede for people. This is how we're to intercede for people. Can you believe this person did that? Yeah, I know. What a, can you believe what they did to there? Can you believe what they did there? <laughs> let's, let's go here. Where are, we, where are we at? Somebody tell me. First Corinthians 13, 1. So he says, or 12, 31, he says, let me show you a more excellent way. And then he leads into 1 Corinthians 13, which is the love chapter, verse 1. <clears throat> he tells us, <clears throat> in 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Let me go here. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I do not have love, I am only a ringing gong or a clanging cymbal. So I can reason with my kids. And I can give them the best message ever. I can reason with you. I can give you, I can give you the, most, the greatest message. But if I don't have love, he says, what? It's just a clanging symbol. It just, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mystery and all knowledge, and if I have absolute faith so as to move mountains, but I do not have love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and exalt in the surrender of my body, but I have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is patient. This is the first word that God uses to describe love. What you'll find that God is patient, not willing. You, you remember this passage where it talks about the return of the Lord, a day is like a thousand years to the Lord. Okay. This is in Thessalonians and they're asking why, when Lord, when is your return? When is your return? And he says, well, I want you to be, not to be ignorant. I want you to understand this, that a day, uh, a, a, a day to the Lord is like a thousand years to us. And God is not slow concerning his promises, but is patient. Why? Why is God patient? Because somebody tell me why God is patient. Be it, says, it says this, because he is wanting as many as possible to come to him. As many as possible to come to repent. This is 1 Thessalonians, the end of 1 Thessalonians. He's wanting as many. Patience is the space where people are allowed to choose. Let me say it this way. More than God is allowed to choose, if God is willing not, not to lose anyone, which we just read in 
1 Timothy chapter 2, pray for all men. If you were to keep on reading all the way to like maybe verse 4, he said, it's God's will that all men would be saved and come to the knowledge of him. It's God's will. So let me say it this way. If it's God's will that all men would be saved and God is patient so that more would come to him, how many of you could say that patience is what allows God to have his will? Patience. So when I pray, you and I pray, I can pray and I can have patience and, I, and, and then guess what? God, I can allow God's space or time to move so that I can have what he desires and my children can have what he desires and my finances can be a picture he desires and my life can be a picture he desires if, if you and I would just stay or, or just have what? Patience. Which if you were to break patience down, ultimately he says, now love is patient. So holding the love of God in our hearts, this is what all of this is about, is holding the love of God in our heart. Let's go back here and let's define patience. Patience is this, defined in the in the strong or from the Greek. Refusing to retaliate from anger. (laughs) Could you be angry with God? Could you be, let's just say this, hmm, not angry, but just Can your can your my prayers like cease because he doesn't listen anyway? This is our thoughts. What's the point? Figure this out. I've been praying for this for this long and I've been doing this and could we we could. Matter of fact, I propose to you, you might not call it anger, but this word patient, love is patient. It means to re- refuse to respond from a place of frustration. Love refuses, refuses. This is where your see, love is a choice. I can refuse to respond from a place of frustration, anger, bitterness, And this is what I'm talking about. Where do those words come from? Where where does anger and bitterness and frustration and all of these things come from? Well, they come from here. I grew them. They came from my heart. Well, how did I grow them? Because I let some other words in. And so now I'm responding, mm, not from love. I'm responding from frustration, from bitterness, from this. And let me, this is so cool. It says, refusing to respond, refusing to retaliate, refusing to respond from, from anger or frustration. This is what this, I so highlighted, underlined, bolded, green in my notes. Because of human reasoning. Patience is refusing to respond Refusing to retaliate, refusing to respond out of frustration because of human reasoning, but instead extends for a long time. I'm reminded of when, when, when I think it's Jacob, he prayed and it says, as soon as you prayed, I was sent. And the angel had to tell him, as soon as you prayed, the angel had to tell him, as soon as you prayed, I was sent. But there was a war going on. Can I tell you, there's wars going on over your destiny. Can I tell you, there's wars going on over your children. Can I tell you, there's wars going on. And there's, there's battles that you can't win, and I can't win, except, except the power of God be in play. And so I'm here to tell you that when you pray, God goes to work. And the angel said to him, he said, hey, as soon as you prayed, I came. As soon as you prayed, I was on my way. Don't look at what you see. Refuse to respond from frustration, agitation, anger, and human reasoning. Refuse to respond from vain words Words that are not my words that have gotten into your heart and made you bitter or whatever it might be. Refuse to respond. Refuse to release other words that will have to be tended. 
But instead, release and partner with me. Write a letter from what your heart would want when it's unhindered by all these other things. Write a letter and ask me to do what, what, what you want. What do you want? Here's what I found. As a child of God, your greatest desire as a child of God truly is, if you could, um, if you, in a sense, peel the onion, your greatest desire is to please your Father. Amen. Amen. Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. Be soft and pliable to Him. And He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to Him. Trust in Him. Trust in Him. Wait with Him. And as you trust Him along the way, you'll find that He pulls it off perfectly. This is T- That's the mixture of King James, NIV, TPT. But it, it, verse 5, it says, C- commit your way. Next verse. If, if you and I commit our way to Him, trust Him. Trust. Wait. He will do it. He'll do it. Uh, the TPT says, and as you t- commit your way to Him, and as you trust Him along the way, you'll find that He pulls it off perfectly. So love is patient, refusing, refuses to retaliate, refuses to respond from frustration, anger, because of human reasoning, but extends a long period of time. Can I tell you, this patience that I'm talking about is not something that you and I can muster up. It comes from the love of God. Can I tell you, it's a fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. Now the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience. Patience. There's the love of God in you that He equips you and I. And did you, can I tell you that the fruits of the Spirit come from the seeds of the Spirit, which is this? Can I tell you that when, I talk, when we talk about the significance of the Word of God in our life, it's not about right and wrong, but it truly is about life and death, that, that you and I, from this place, it produces in me that which I need, it produces in me, it, it strengthens me, it gives me a strong place to hold and to stand even in the storm so that I could respond and that my prayers would be, I'd be partnered with God. And you know, if you've been, this is what's so cool. If, if my prayers have been non-existing or if I've been, war, in a sense, warring in my own way, it's all I have to do is just, it says, stop. Just pop, stop. And, and instead, because here's what's going on. The reason we we're warring is anxious thoughts. Anxious thoughts. Stop. He says, but, but instead, instead, get me involved. Instead, get me. This is all letters from the heart. I just want God involved. I want God involved in every church service. I want God involved in what we're doing here. I want God involved in my family. I want God involved. I want God to do more than Nate can do. Are you, are you t- have you come to the end of yourself? I mean, I'm, I'm to the end of myself. I'm to the end of me. I don't want any more of me. You know what I want? I just want to be still. And I want to know Him as God. I, I want to be still. This is, this is a little a note card thing that we were out and about. And it's, um, it was this box and I saw that. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I'm God. And, um, I'd asked uh, Mo to, to, to do me a favor. Could you get me the names of every person in our church? Everyone that gives or serves. So that's the only way I know you. And I want to get a Rolodex. Because I, 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 it's important that as a pastor, that I stay in that place of prayer and interceding for the people of this house. So, well, let's just go. Right here, Jesse Crownover. I don't know. Let's just see here. I go this alphabetical order, so we can just go through, kind of like you do the New Testament. We're going through. Jocelyn, Harless, parentheses youth. She just helpful. So how do I pray? So this is this is one of these things. And so I'm talking about interceding, and um, I, I don't think I've done a good job and this is uh, of talking about this enough and I talked about last Wednesday I haven't done a good enough job um, or haven't been consistent enough talking about giving you listen to last Wednesday's not just 
four days ago, but the week before, talking about giving. Um, I haven't talked about that enough. One thing I haven't talked in this church enough about is the ministry and the gift of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and Jesus went away, and in John 14 through 16, chapters 14 through 16, he talks about it being better that he goes away because he's going to give you a helper. Anybody need some help? God, I need help. I need help. And he's gonna, he said, oh, I'm going to send you somebody. I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you um, a standby. I'm going to send you one that will remind you of everything that I said because what you see is going to be awfully loud sometimes. He's not going to speak on his own behalf, but he will only tell you and only speak what I say. That's cool. That's cool. And so he said, wait here in Jerusalem that you would be that you could receive this gift, that you would, in Acts chapter 1, that you would receive power to be a witness. What is a witness? Is one who testifies of him. You know what testifies of him? Love. You know what love is? Patience. This is huge. So look, how do I pray patiently? How do I pray when it, it seems like I'm, I've, I've waited? I'm, how do I pray? Where do I pray? How do I do? What, what's the best way to pray for my children? What's the best way to pray for that marriage? What's the, what's the best way to pray for my marriage? What's the best way to pray? I'll tell you how it is. It's to pray in the Spirit. With the, pray in the Spirit. What do you mean by praying in the Spirit? Well, Paul says he prays in his understanding, but he also prays in the Spirit. He tells, says this, that, that how tongues, the gift of tongues, it's not just a gift like, a, it, it is a gift, but it's not something that is only for any, just a few, anybody who wants it. All the spiritual gifts, he says, to desire them, Cult, desire them, but it's given to you. It's given to you. Well, what does it do for us? What does it do? It does this. When you don't know how to pray, the Bible tells us that he'll come to your aid and he'll pray, not just a natural way, but heaven's way. Think about this. I don't understand it. You don't understand it. Satan's strategies don't understand it. But even when I pray, angels go to work. We know this. When I prayed, angels are sent. So could you imagine praying in the spirit for somebody that is in a dark place? Can you imagine... Um, infantry of he the infantry of heaven come into your children come into your husband come into your loved one come into your aid come into your aid for favor come into doing the work in your body he can can you imagine but can can you imagine what it, well the bible tells us that not only does it come to our not only does the holy spirit help us in our weaknesses by giving a, when we don't know how to pray as we ought so we pray we don't know how to pray as we ought but we pray perfect prayers as we pray in the Spirit. But the Bible tells us in Jude chapter 1, verse 20, that he that prays in an unknown known tongue it builds himself up. You ever, like, build, who, who's yourself? Well, I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. I feed my spirit, man, so that I can make a choice from here instead of everything I see out here. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about praying in the Spirit this morning. I'm talking about praying in the Spirit and praying in other tongues. And it's a gift that is only reason it's warred against in this world is because the enemy knows that it's a tool for you to, to, to advance and for you and I to walk out God's perfect plan in this world. It's got to happen. Now, does being baptized in the Spirit and, and uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, there's, there's, there, there, this is something that we cover in starting point. So this is like basic stuff. It, it's, in, it's not, it, you know, the most fundamental things are the best things to know. It's what really we just should build our life off of. Just go back to the basics again and again and again. But when I'm born again, the Bible tells us that, that the Holy Spirit baptizes us into Christ. It, it, that's what it tells us. Okay? And, and, and when I'm born again, I'm born again. Did you know you don't have to be water baptized to be born again? Did you know you don't have to be baptized in the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues to be born, to, to be born again or to go to heaven? <clears throat> but so this is the doctrine of baptism mentioned in Hebrews, okay? Uh, 7 2 or 6 2. Um, 7 2, I think. Uh, might be 8 2. No. Um, it's one of those. But he says this he says that there's a doctrine of baptisms, plural. I don't have to be bapt water baptized. I don't have to be baptized 
with the evidence of speaking in tongues to be saved. But I do have to, to advance. See, what happens with, when I identify with Christ in water baptism, I'm identifying with this body as being dead to sin and being dead and crucified, crucified death, buried, and now raised to new life in Christ. And this body is filled with the same spirit the, the, to overcome, and, and I'll tell you, if, if you're struggling in this body and you've never been water baptized, you haven't made a public declaration of who Christ is, let me tell you, that's one of the, one of the things you can do to order this body and tell this body what it's going to do and do it before men, and you'll find that, man, you're able to stand stronger. Well, so that's awesome. But then the same thing is true for the baptism of the Spirit. Okay? When you're baptized, with the when the spirit within, it's the difference between the spirit within or the spirit upon, okay? And the, and the gift of the evidence of speaking in tongues, okay? This is huge for us. It's huge. It's huge. Thank you, Lord. I think I ran out of time. Um, thank you, Lord. I give you three scriptures that you can take for homework and then um, I'll want to stand John chapter 17 26 John 17 26 this is the last scripture in Jesus's prayer for believers John 17, 26, he prays that the love of, that, that we would know the love of God that they, and that the love of God would dwell in us. This is his prayer. This, it's interesting. Paul's prayer is completely identical to Jesus' prayer. The purpose of everything is that the love of God would dwell in you and that it would flow from you. Okay? And then Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, I was going to say 17 and 18, but I would say starting in verse 14 where he talks about praying um, for the body and praying and he one of the in, in 17 through 18 I believe it is or maybe it's 16 through 17 but just go 14 through 18 for Ephesians 3 14 through 18 he talks about praying that we would know the love of God you know that's the thing that encountered Paul on that road and things turned on a dime that quick so those things and then <clears throat> I want us to stand. I know this wasn't, the, you know, <laughs> sometimes I think that, um, I think the, the idea as a pastor to quote unquote land the plane, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of silly and it puts a, it, I'm not saying not to carry a complete thought and not to put a, me a message together, um, but I believe that the Lord was talking directly and he landed the plane in your heart throughout this message on different things you know um and so it's okay to not to just close the book and just say you know what we're done here that's it um and then move on to the next thing and that is this uh where i was talking about praying in other tongues i i i challenge you and remind want to remind you to pray in the spirit over your children. I challenge you and remind you to pray in the Spirit over your finances. I challenge and remind you to pray in the Spirit over your, the ones to your left and to your right because they're your body. The same way that your hand is a part of you, they're a part of you. According to the Word of God. According to the Word of God, I challenge you to pray over marriages, to pray over things that, let me say this, this way, simplest way, that would want to fill your heart and cause, and cause you to have to pull aside, to pull the car over, so to speak. I challenge you to pray in the Spirit concerning those things. And that's if you're filled with the Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues or been baptized in the Spirit. If you're born again, you already have the Spirit of God in you. Okay? Make that clear. His Spirit bears witness with our spirit. We're a child of God. But he tells us that the Spirit of God is to come upon us to be a witness 
our mouth, to let our mouth be yielded to him, to testify of what he's wanting to do, to partner with him. And so um, that's what I, I, I just I want to do this morning. Now, if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and this is also one of the things why, where we, I, I, I haven't been bold enough to call people up front when it comes to salvation, and, and therefore I allowed their body to rule over them because of fear and fear of man. We're not having fear of man in this house, okay? If, if, if you got to get born again and you came here because you need to meet Jesus, then I would say, I need you to come up front, okay? And I, and I, I want, that's, that's an invitation for salvation. If you don't know where you'd spend eternity, right today, and you want to get right with God, there's an invitation to come up front, and that's right here on this side, right here, okay? If you need to meet Jesus, if you need to rededicate your life, whatever it might be, right here. Oh, I know, it's 12 o'clock, I get it. Right here. But this is about eternity. And, and then this is also about destinies. This is, then the next thing is about interceding on the behalf of loved ones, interceding on the behalf of your children, praying perfectly, strengthening you on your inner man. When you're ready, you're, you want to quit, you're ready to give up, but you need strength. Praying in the Spirit and, and praying perfectly. So if you've never been baptized with the evidence of speaking in tongues and you would like to be baptized in the Spirit, and speak in, in other tongues and be able to pray in a heavenly language and be able to pray and speak forth mysteries, well, then that's for you, too. And you know what? If nobody comes, guess what? I was obedient. And this is what we need to do. We need to be obedient people. No matter what happens or doesn't happen. Because you can't see what's happening. I want to remind you, and this is why you can be patient. Because you can't see. You can't see it. But when you pray, when you speak. So my job is not to perform. I need to keep him in the place of provider. I need to keep him in the place of the one that does it. Not Nate. And not you. And I do that through prayer. I do that not just through prayer, but for obedience. So if you need to give your life to Christ and you want to do that, I want to invite you up front right here. And we're going to play. Um, go ahead and play something. I, you can turn that up on the mu music a little bit or however you do that. You know, help me out. Yeah, thank you. The house. Uh, and then the last thing, if, if you have want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, again, the Bible says one other thing, to build faith, okay? The Bible says that you know how to give good gifts to your children, Okay. He says, if you ask for a fish, do he, do he give you a snake? Or if you ask for a stone or bread, does he give you a stone? No. He said, but how much more will my Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Okay? So, if that's you. So, again, rededication of life right here. And then if you want to be baptized in the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues right here, we're going to wait about five minutes, and then we're going to dismiss. And if you're filled with the Spirit because you're not coming up here, okay, or you just don't want it, you can stay out there. You just keep your mouth closed. But... <clears throat> If you are baptized in the Spirit, and no, that's maybe too direct, but I'm just telling you the truth. If you are filled with the Spirit, then I, I ask you to begin to just pray in the Spirit concerning the people that are supposed to come up here and pray over the lives of these people. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Can I remind you that ministry doesn't happen only from a pastor? It happens from the congregation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
All right. Um, thank you, Lord. You know, it's important that if we are the body of Christ and we're a family and we're called and we're, um, we're to carry the message of Jesus Christ that we know how to do it. So how to pray with someone to receive the baptism of the Spirit, but also how to pray with someone to be born again. You know, um, sometimes we just leave that to pastors. And so Pastor Evan had came up here and she said, hey, why don't you just leave your mic on and let people kind of understand how this is done because otherwise you just always kind of like stand on the outside looking in instead of like being in a place where you're on a late night God talk with somebody and they're struggling and they don't know and then you can ask them have you ever been baptized in the spirit and then you could administer it okay this is important right and so that's that's what we're gonna do um and so it <clears throat> And I, and, I, and I know it's, it's, it's 12, 12. If you got to go get your kids, you're more than welcome to get your kids and you can leave if you want. If you want to hang here and you want to maybe, uh, you know, participate in this and, and maybe um, just, just kind of watch. Maybe you do, you already know, but you can maybe learn something or there maybe be an impartation, be a contributor. I uh, invite you to stay here because this is important. And you know, um, when I got baptized in the spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, it was 1995. It was at a youth camp. And I was one of 30 kids that came up in the front. And I, I struggled to, to, to shut my mind off and, and, and tap into my heart and yield that way. But the minister stayed with me. Everybody else was gone. And you know what I was thinking about? When the hands were laid upon me, because the Bible tells us that when you ask, all you have to do is ask the, ask the Father for the Holy Spirit. So you ask. And, 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 I, and there's scripture where in, in Acts, you see this, how, how God did it. You don't have to have lay, hands laid on you. But when a, when, a, a, when a disciple of Christ comes and says, hey, when the hands were laid upon him, it says they received the Holy, received the Holy Spirit and began and speak in other tongues. Okay, so that's why we do that. Because the Bible shows us this by example. So we follow that example. So when hands are laid, I'm talking to all of you guys here. So when hands are laid upon you, according to Acts, and according to the, that you will receive the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Upon, the, upon hands laid upon you, okay, the same, you'll, you'll receive, the, and you'll begin to speak in other tongues, but you'll do the speaking. I won't do the speaking, he won't do the speaking, he'll fill it, and you'll open your mouth, and you'll begin to speak. But you'll have to yield. So you'll have to get this shut off. And so what ha was happening to me, when I had my hands up, and I'm, I'm a, uh, 1995, I don't know how old, I'm 83, so I'm 12, 13 years old, kind of in the age where you're trying to be cool and all that kind of stuff. My hands are up, and how many of you know, when your hands are up, and her hand is on my belly. Now, I wasn't, I had like no skin, no meat on my bones. I mean, I, I mean, I'm muscle, no, no chubba. But you know what the thought was? Oh, I hope my belly doesn't look bad. And I was thinking, okay, uh, try to suck it in. Um, oh, okay, and then, but then all, all the while I'm trying to do that and I'm trying to figure out how to do this and I can't figure it out here. I just got to yield here. I just got to just, and, and can I tell you, she stayed with me for that, that period of time and it maybe it was maybe five minutes, but it felt like 400, right? And can I tell you that night at camp, everybody was doing their night, night hikes and all that kind of stuff. Can I tell you, I laid on the top of my bed in, in the cabin and everybody else was eating pizza and doing that kind of stuff. And my friends are coming in and, you know, I just had tears in my eyes because God gave me what I asked for. Yes. Yes. And if you're hungry, he said, I'll fill you. If you're needing help, if you're needing to know how to pray for your kids, if you're needing help, I'll fill you. Thank you for coming. Glory to God. And so we're going to do this, all right? And so, Father, the Bible tells us, again, when hands are laid upon them, if you asked, so if you ask, if you want to be filled with the Spirit, the baptism, right? Thank you, Father. So it's something you have to work up. It's you, you're hungry. You're asking. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord because that's where you're receiving from. Thank you, Father. And so we lay hands. There it is. There it is. <laughs> and so mysteries made clear. And oh, a strength from within. Ah, thank you, Father. Cool, Raman, the Rakos. And I just be, keep beginning to pray and keep praying loud enough for yourself to hear it. Cool, Raman, the Rakos, and oh, Rama, Kasandara day, Rama, Stosh, Tiki, Dodo, Raman, the day. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Rust, Dodo, Raman, the Thank you, Lord. So we're 
receiving from him. When hands were laid upon him, they just began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So in the name of Jesus, and so just yield to that. Oh, Rabba, ba, ba, da, de, Ramon, da, go, san, da, da, de, e, da, do, ya, da, da, de, go, shan, da, da, de, so. And so, no, da, de, yeah, yeah, there it is. It, it's right there. Go, Rama, ba, 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 ba. We get, bo, Rabba, de, de, Rama, san, da, da, de, ka, yeah, yeah. Then, no, Rama, sto, shti, at the day. It's so, no, do, Rama, da, da, de. Thank you, Father. So, in the name. Yeah. Yeah, so you're gonna, you're gonna speak. Yeah, it's it's right there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I'm gonna lay hands on you. You're gonna lift it to the Lord. Are you you born again? You give your life to Jesus? Yeah, okay. Father, in the name, what's your name? Father, thank you for bringing Joe here today. Thank you for placing hunger in his heart. I thank you that where you have drawn him, you want to bring his heart's desire to fulfillment. So I ask you to fill him right now in the name of Jesus. There it is. <laughs> Oh, Rabba Sandrada, yeah. Oh, no, go. We give you the glory. Oh, Rabba Sandrada de Ki Sandrada de To be a witness, unhindered, 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 unhindered. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabba Stake, Rabba Sandrada de Ki. Eh, Rabba. So, so I thank you, Father, for even things becoming clear. Thank you for things becoming clear in the name of Jesus. Thank you for things becoming clear and these feet and these steps. Uh, just the acceleration running forth uh, not only because it's clear but because there's a new strength in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you father thank you father thank you lord thank you lord so all right so hey well, <clears throat> thank you lord we're gonna, we're gonna lay hands on you ever been baptized with the spirit before never okay all right so just as we've been talking you know, you're hungry, your heart desires more of Him, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's a great place to be. Where God, and even all the cares, and I think like I just am picking up in my heart, you just, you just want God to work in your life. And so this is just about you yielded and Him partnering, you partnered with Him. No matter where you've been, no matter what's been going on, no matter what, like He just loves you. <laughs> he just loves you. And so just lift your hands to Him. And I just, uh, we're going to lay hands on you. And, and as we do, you're just going to, just going to speak and, and, and thank you, Father. Ask you to fill her to overflow. Hallelujah. Yeah. So a new way to yield, a new way to see. With the eyes of your heart, with the eyes of your heart. A new way, a new way, a new way. What, what seemed to be, oh, Rabu Sandara. So begin to keep praying. And make that way. There it is. Yep, there. Yeah, so a new way, a new way to see that won't, it, it, you don't have to try to see it. It's, it's what's there. The eyes of the heart. Oh, God's working for me. God's working for me. God's working for me. But he's also working through me. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. God's working through me. Oh, thank you, Father. Heaven, all of heaven. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. All right. Thank you, Father. All right. Why? Well, thank you for coming up. You know, it's never too late to respond. I think this is so cool. So thank you for coming. Um, you, you've been born again. You've given your life to Jesus. It's so cool. But you're going to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, evidence of speaking in tongues, the path of your of your feet. There's the plans of God, and even just a boldness, you know. And uh, it's going to just it's just going to come upon you. All right. So just lift your hands to heaven. 
where you receive from. But Father, in the name of Jesus, as we lay hands on him, I thank you, Father, for just filling this young man. There it is. <laughs> Uh, so we bypass the heart or the head and we go right to the heart begin to speak uh, uh, but with boldness because you know that's it yeah 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 so let your ears hear let your ears hear and the other voices here young man and his steps order thank you for just uh, every gift necessary every promise to fill this heart and to be reminded i just thank you for reminded i just put a cup over in the name of jesus like a, a like a like a just a guard over these ears uh and a clarity to this ear ha amplified here concerning the calls and the plans in the name of Jesus, a great trust to come upon you for God to finish what he started. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Oh, the stairs there. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hey, thank you, guys. Thank you. God is so good. Amen. Can we give him some praise? Amen. Father, we worship you. We worship you. You're so great. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, well, if you need uh, prayer, an agreement and prayer for healing in your body or anything along those lines, I'd love to pray with you. Otherwise, we'll see you Wednesday night. Uh, again, remember, we're going to hang out afterwards and have some snow cones and all that good stuff. All right, God bless you. Carry Jesus with you. Amen.